All right, my friends, the first thing you need to know is my name is Dennis. Let's go. Bum, bum. Don't you worry, my friends, because we'll discuss everything in this video. Q, F, Q, and H, flight levels, heights, and everything. But first, let's start from the atmospheric pressure, because it's acting on me just right now, in this room, in this studio. And also, it is acting on you, wherever you are on this planet Earth. And also, it's in space because our atmosphere actually it's not thin as you used to think it is very high up to 20,000 kilometers do i feel the atmospheric pressure on my body right now i would say no because it's been distributed all over my body there is no any specific point of pressure for me to feel it but you may be very sensitive to the pressure in that case your body may react differently with the pressure change so i cannot see the pressure but i can measure it so what do we use to measure the pressure actually we use the very simple instrument and it's called barometer yes my friends barometer if I put the jar, the simple jar over here, and I put the mercury inside, so we have some mercury, Hg, and I put, let's say, the cone, and I'll do the vacuum here, the mercury inside the jar will go up. And if I put the scale here, we can check the pressure so the air pressure acts on the jar and we have the special height on this column very very simple on this tube actually but the air pressure is not constant and the higher you climb the lower the pressure will be here in this case i'll show you so here at the surface level you have a very dense air the molecules are very close to each other if we climb higher the distance between molecules would rise or will rise and the concentration of the air is more thin more thick than you come close to the ground so up to five kilometers we have 50 percent of all atmospheric concentration this thin layer of five kilometers if we climb higher let's say 10 kilometers we'll have 75 uh, percent of all atmospheric air mass here here's the altitude where the commercial planes usually fly where sometimes even higher up to 12 kilometers so the air here is less dense much less dense compared to air near the surface level and that is why the mercury in our barometer will not rise high at the high altitudes compared to the let's say sea level and that is why we need to descend even though the oxygen saturation in the air will not change up to 100 kilometers of uh, height from the ground the oxygen will be 21 percent the nitrogen 78 percent so it's o2 and nitrogen and one percent are other gases so this propulsion will stay up to 100 kilometers but still you have low pressure for you to breathe if you have rapid decompression at this altitude or this flight level that is why we need to descend very fast we'll do the emergency descent procedure to reach the higher saturation to reach the higher uh, atmospheric pressure and the low altitude bum, bum. you might have heard the term standard pressure so if we take this barometer and measure the pressure at the sea level and if you measure the pressure under zero degrees of centigrade with standard air density you will have 
760 millimeters here so the mercury will rise up to this level if we speak about the imperial uh, numbers you will have 29.92 inches of mercury and we can also measure the pressure that this mercury level creates so mercury was raised up to 760 millimeters and that pillar the column will create the pressure of one zero one three two five pascals if we put yes yeah, pascals if we put point here it will be one zero one three point two five hectopascals and one hectopascal equals uh, one millibar so sometimes you have the millibar scale in your altimeter sometimes you have the hectopascals so they are the same my friends uh, if you fly in ex-soviet in ex-soviet airplane you will have the 760 millimeters on your altimeter setting so different units for different countries for different airplanes but mostly uh, on some of the altimeters on most of the altimeters you will have this 1013 setting if you set the standard scale the standard pressure have this and you have 2992 so two windows for hectopascals and for inches if you change the scale we will change them both and I'll tell you later why you need to change them bum, bum. let me draw you one more picture so here we are at the ground level and we have the balloon just a simple balloon maybe with helium in size or helium it has pressure expanding from inside of helium and it has the pressure that acts from outside the atmospheric pressure let's go with pressure one if the balloon is going higher right here it will change in size because the pressure p2 the atmospheric pressure that acts is much lower at the very high altitude at higher altitude let's say not very high but the pressure of helium inside is constant that is why the balloon will change its size and maybe at some point it may even explode it will rise itself in size and the pressure will be so high compared to outside pressure that the balloon will explode that is what our airplanes experience each time they fly so we have the pressurized cabin we have some extra pressure inside and much lower pressure outside and this thing is called the differential pressure if we put the let's say arrow here and the scale to the ball we may actually measure the pressure and let's say we'll put it to zero let's say two four six and here zero maybe two four and the arrow will deflect so the uh, balloon will rise in its size deflecting the arrow and it will show the different volume and we may call this volume feet so actually feet the pressure change is usually gradual so per one pitch per each 27 feet of altitude the pressure changes with one hectopascal so 27 feet or around eight meters eight meters of altitude equals the change of one hectopascal so you can measure the pressure or you can measure the altitude that is how altimeters work so we have similar balloons inside the altimeters they are very sophisticated ones 
but they're connected with a special sensor that will show us the pressure change and then the pressure scale will be changed to altitude scale to feet meters whatever so usually now everywhere there are feet but still you may find some airplanes that with a meter scale on their altimeters bum, bum. and now let's speak about qfe qnh and qne here we have two airports so runway number one and runway number two here let's say that uh, elevation of this airport above the sea level is uh, 540 feet here's the sea level let's say this is the sea and here's the second airport with elevation of 270 feet lower so every airport has its own uh, barometer it has its own uh, meteor station and let's say the pressure the QFE QFE is the pressure at particular airport you see at this airport the QFE is 1000 hectopascals here if you count the standard um, barometric difference so for each hectopascal one hectopascal we have the we have to climb or descend 27 feet you may see that we need to add 20 hectopascals here so 540 divided by 27 will be 20 and the lower we are the higher the pressure is so over the sea level it will be 120 hectopascals and that is QNH QN QNH here the QNH will be the same because this let's say this airport is very close but QNH may not be the same if the airports are quite far away because you have different uh, system you have different pressures you have different atmospheric conditions for example cyclones when where the pressure is uh, lower than usual or anti-cyclones where the pressure is higher than usual so usually the weather goes like up and down the pressure goes up and down so at one airport the QNH may not be the same with other airport so why do we need the QNH here why not to fly the QFE because if you set the QFE on your airfield you will have the altimeter setting zero so if you fly if you take off with QFE 1000, you set it in your altimeter, you have the zero altitude indication and it's very useful to fly circles or the airfield for your training. But if you set a QNH, your altimeter will show you the airport elevation 540. And again, if we'll set the QNH here, the altimeter will show us 270 feet so why not to use the QFE because if we'll set the QFE so if the QNH is 1020 if we add the standard pressure range we'll have the setting of 1010 hectopascals of QFE here so that's the QFE but if we set QFE here with 1010 we'll also have the zero altimeter setting if we fly here our QFE altitude will be over this level if we fly there our QFE will be over this level so our altitude will be the same but real altitude will differ and that will provide wrong separation between the aircraft and also published obstacle altitudes as we can see here they are published over the sea level so for example we have 2500 uh, feet that's the obstacle uh, altitude not the height by the but the altitude height might be different over the airfield and also have the gap here between your obstacle altitude and minimal safe altitude in the special range around the airfield so that is how things work 
in a small area around the airport but if you fly somewhere at quite low altitude you need to change your QNH pressure changes then you fly okay in the one airport it, it may be the QNH 1020 in other it may be 1022 and also there is area QNH so it's the minimum QNH in some kind of area so if you take off from this airfield you fly somewhere you maintain you obtain the area QNH and you will set it in your altimeter then you want to descend and land to other airport you will obtain the airport QNH and you will descend and land according to it for QV and QNH everything is simple so if you fly over your airfield training flights you may set the QV if you fly somewhere on your route you need to set the QNH uh, just to make maintain the separation between the airplanes and also the obstacle separation also there is one more pressure called QE and it's the standard pressure 1013 that we are we are talking about before 1013 hectopascals and depends on the weather conditions on actual QNH it may be different so here in this case if we have the level of QNH 1020 the pressure the standard pressure will be higher than the sea level 1013 hectopascals over there if the QNH let's say 1000 at the sea level pressure the QNH will be lower than the sea level and you said the QNH you said the standard pressure and then obstacles are no longer the factor because then you said the standard pressure you don't fall the straight line you fall flat levels which are like this because it there depends now they depend on the sea pressure so at some point of our earth the QNE will be higher if the QNH will drop the QNE will also drop and you fly like this here so relative to this level you fly also like this so it's not your straight flight but you will maintain the separation between the airplanes and that's the main thing so we have special flight levels let's say flight level 210 and here's the low one flight level 200 so we can maintain the separation between the airplanes you will never collide if you maintain that according to the QE altimeter setting it may sound quite complicated my friends but actually it's very very simple in most of the countries we no longer use the QFE so we use only the QNH then you land to the airfield you have the runway elevation on your altimeter and it's a normal thing if you have the high elevation airfield taking account then then you land you will have the high altimeter setting on your altimeter high altitude setting so make sure to decelerate the proper altitude because then you fly to let's say airport with the 3000 feet elevation 3000 then your altimeter will show you 7000 it doesn't mean that you are the 7000 relative to this airport it means that you are only 4000 and yes you need to decelerate to extend the flaps and land to that airfield and there you will have 3000 on your altimeter bum, bum. Now, one more thing my friends i hope you like it because I know that I will not have a lot of views uh, for this video, but some of you requested me to film about the QNE, QNH, QFE. So I did my best, I did what I could uh, to film the video about this stuff. But anyway, thank you very much for your support. It's not only my channel, it's your channel as well. So tell me in the comment section what would you like to see in this channel. So your ideas, everything that you want me to film. I know you are awesome and that is why you need to follow the awesome guy checklist as usual. And it's very, very simple thing to do. First, you just need to like this video second subscribe to my channel i know most of you subscribed already and the last thing as far as i remember what is that oh ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for your attention and 
have a great time